Welcome to the 21-22 Philly Pop season announcement. My name is Frank Giordano, CEO of the Philly Pops, and this has been a year like no other year. Last year on Valentine's Day, we announced the appointment of David Charles Abel as music director and principal conductor. And David is here with us today, and you'll hear from him in a bit. He's really written the playbook for Christmas since he first came to the Pops as guest conductor in 2013. Now in his first year as our music director and principal conductor, he has so much more to offer us. And I know you'll look forward to hearing from David. Our theme today is Lights Up Showtime because we're back. The Pops today announces our 21-22 lineup, but we make that announcement against a backdrop of a year that required a very different approach to performing. Yet, perform we did, streaming patriotism on July 3rd and broadcasting with Welcome America featuring Cynthia Revo on NBC 10 on July 4th. And then there was Christmas streamed to 30,000 viewers locally, and for the Christmas salute version, distributed through the American Forces Network, which reaches over 500,000 personnel abroad in 24 time zones, including ships of sea of the US Navy and Coast Guard. We thank each of you who took any part in this incredible journey with us. And there's more to come. We plan more streams this spring, including Pops Rocks, Paul Simon, James Taylor, Billy Joel with Michael Cavanaugh in March, and our Jazz Appreciation Month program in April, Ella, Billy, Dinah, and all that jazz. Then we have Memorial Salute at Demand, which is booked for May 29th. We hope this will be with a live audience, perhaps a little reduced, certainly social distance, but a live audience nonetheless. And now we look to the season ahead. As usual, every concert series set for next season is full of award-winning work performed by a series of unforgettable artists. There is particular sense of importance to this season because of the past year when we weren't able to perform and performing is what we do best. We want to bring joy and fun to all of you. Our way of putting out the darkness and challenges of the year we just endured with light and their traditional pops hearts and love for Valentine's Day. Today, we tell you all about our plans for our 43rd anniversary season, Lights Up Showtime, the theme for our return to the stage and to you. Before we begin, I want to personally thank Parks Casinos, the presenting sponsor of our subscription series, for being an incredible partner and in making everything that we do possible. And we'd be remiss if we didn't thank our partners for the Salute Series, Wow Wow Welcome America, Live Nation, the City of Philadelphia, and of course, the presenting sponsor of the Salute Series, Comcast NBC Universal. Thanks to all of you who have tuned in this morning, our board members, our subscribers, our generous donors, and our dedicated staff. We're not at the top of the Bellevue having our traditional Valentine's announcement, even though I do have my Valentine's tie on today, but we do have some drink recipes and ideas for Valentine's cookies and treats available on our website to set the stage. Thanks to Ron Kerber on clarinet, Matt Gallagher on trumpet, Greg Riley on sax, Tim Bray on piano, and Michael Ludwig on violin for providing some small riffs of the music we're talking about today. It is now my pleasure to introduce the architect of the magic that he will provide for this season, Lights Up Showtime. It is my honor to welcome the Philly Pops music director and principal conductor, David Charles Abel. Thank you, Frank. And on behalf of the musicians and the soloists who perform with the Pops, I'd like to especially thank you and the board and the donors and sponsors and our 
POPS administration for everything you do, which makes it possible for us to bring you inspired performances of American popular music. That's our mission. Now, as Frank said, I was appointed last Valentine's Day. The year didn't turn out exactly as I expected. Once the pandemic hit, the only way to bring music to our audiences was to stream it. So the POPS staff had to reinvent themselves as video producers. It helped that our COO, Karen Corbin, has years of experience in television production, and the rest of us had to just figure out how to do it. It was sort of fun to figure it out. Uh, it was like making a new art form. We overcame the obstacles, provided employment for our musicians, and found a way to make music together even during the darkest times. The 21-22 season is the perfect season to lead Philadelphia out of the pandemic. We're focusing on our most popular repertoire the great legacy of American music with Sinatra and Motown, classic Broadway tunes with George Gershwin and Oscar Hammerstein, pops rocks ABBA and the Beatles, thrilling film music with Star Wars, and of course, a Philly Pops Christmas. That's the range of music that only a pops orchestra, our Philly Pops, can do. I'll be conducting three of the concert series myself, as well as all of the Christmas concerts and other Salute Series events. I am so looking forward to being back on stage with our Pops musicians and you, our loyal audience, in the house. Frank Sinatra is Philadelphia's patron saint of song. Sinatra, a man and his music, presented by Citizens Bank, starts the season off right. This amazing concert recreates Sinatra at the Sands, the 1966 smash hit album arranged and conducted by Quincy Jones with the Count Basie Orchestra. These are great arrangements which our pops musicians will absolutely slay. Fan favorite Michael Andrew returns for his fourth show alongside conductor Ricky Minor in his subscription series debut. So Ricky is a friend and mentee of Quincy Jones and has worked with household names like Whitney Houston and Aretha Franklin. This guy is a star. He was music director of American Idol and the Academy Awards. You remember The Tonight Show with Jay Leno? Well, Ricky was the band leader for its last five years. You met him when the Pops played with Jennifer Hudson on the Parkway in 2019. Now you'll get up close and personal with him for this very special take on the chairman. Come fly with me, I've got a crush on you and you make me feel so young in those emphatic and energetic Quincy Jones arrangements. Who could ask for anything more? Mamma Mia, here we go again. In the fall, I'll be conducting Pops Rock's ABBA, Mamma Mia and more. Now, I, I love ABBA's music, not only because it's catchy and fun, but also because the arrangements are so clever. It's really great pop music. Their music topped the charts all over the world in the 70s and the 80s. The vocal group Riaton is coming all the way from Finland to sing ABBA's unforgettable tunes. They're back for their second performance with the Pops. With hits like mm -hmm. Maria, Gimme Gimme Gimme, and Dancing Queen, you'd better bring your dancing shoes. Next comes a concert that I've devised to celebrate legendary Broadway lyricist Oscar Hammerstein II. Now, everyone knows Hammerstein wrote five of the greatest musicals of the 20th century with Richard Rogers, Oklahoma, Carousel, South Pacific, The King and I, and The Sound of Music. You may not know that he also wrote shows with Zygmunt Romberg and Jerome Kern, including The Great Showboat. Oscar was way ahead of his time in daring to tell powerful stories of racial inequity. I can't say enough about the talent for this show. Three terrific singers who have all appeared on Broadway. My old friend Liz Calloway, we went to high school together. Rosina Hill Jackson and Damian Humbley, who I met when I lived in London. We'll also have our wonderful Philly Pops Festival Chorus. Incidentally, Hammerstein lived the last 20 years of his life just outside Philadelphia in Doylestown. Guess who his neighbor was? None other than the 14-year-old Stephen Sondheim. Sondheim ended up taking lessons in musical theater from Oscar. I mean, who could teach better than Oscar Hammerstein? So we will be bringing you that promised Sondheim concert sometime in a future season. Stay tuned. Byron Stripling, our frequent guest conductor, will be back for his fourth show with the Pops. Byron 
is bringing us a power-packed celebration of the incredible era of Motown. I love this because it's the music that I grew up on. Maybe some of you grew up on it too. Our guests for the celebration will be the American Idol finalist and charted R&B artist Michael Lynch and um, Hairspray stars Shayna Steele and Chester Gregory. The best of Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder and more with the pops, bold brass and smooth strings. Plus, we'll feature a nod to Philly legends Gamble and Huff. The pops will have you singing all night long. Now, I studied Bach, Beethoven and Brahms at Juilliard, but you know whose music I've always wanted to conduct? The Beatles. Here's one of the perks of my Philly Pops job. I get to conduct the Beatles. We will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of their final release in Pops Rock's Let It Be. We'll supplement the Let It Be album with some music from Revolver, the only other album from the Beatles' later, more orchestral repertoire that we haven't yet played. The Fab Four and their producer, George Martin, really knew how to use orchestral instruments. I mean, think of the epic sound of the long and winding road or the famous string quartet accompaniment to Eleanor Rigby. We'll be doing those songs, plus Got to Get You Into My Life, Yellow Submarine, and many more. George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue kicked off the pop's first ever performance back in 1979. I wasn't born in 1979. I don't know if you were, but you know, wow, that was a long time ago. Gershwin's music is a part of the pop's DNA. Guest conductor Byron Stripling is bringing back pop's favorites, Alison Blackwell, Nikki Renee Daniels, and Ryan Silverman for this performance. We're also bringing the incredible pianist and improviser, Charlie Albright, to play Rhapsody in Blue. Those of you who saw our 2020 Christmas stream will remember Charlie playing from his home in Seattle. He even did a long distance duet with Mandy Gonzalez, who was 3,000 miles away in New York City. I got rhythm, summertime, love is here to stay. Swonderful Skirshwin. The music of John Williams has informed our experience of the Star Wars universe for decades. Star Wars, a galaxy of music is the show that will recreate all those magic moments. It's Stuart Chaffetz conducting an original program. He's become a pop culture mainstay of the pops in recent years with Pops Rocks the 80s, The Night Before Christmas, and Pops Rocks Phil Collins. We are thrilled to have him back. I've heard that the newest Star Wars character, Baby Yoda, might even make an appearance at that concert. Now, the first concert I ever conducted with the Philly Pops was back in 2013. Frank Giordano said to me, okay, David, you've got a 60 piece orchestra, a 130 voice chorus, a boys choir, a gospel choir, an organ, a vocal soloist, and Santa Claus, go. <laughs> Boy, was it fun finding ways to combine all those groups and surprise the audience. Then in 2014, we did jokes, holiday stories in 2015, and we brought in a rambunctious Dixieland band in 2019. This past December, we reinvented Christmas once again for our streaming audience, and Santa still managed to join us. Here's the great news. We're back in 2021 with the traditional 300 performers. We've got the incandescent Mandy Gonzalez coming back for another year, and Charlie Albright will be here in person this time, tickling the ivories. For me, Christmas means Philly. Christmas with my pops family. Now, there's also gonna be something new this season, and I like the way this sounds. Drinks with David. I'll be meeting and greeting select subscribers and donors and doing Q&As as we enjoy drinks prepared by a mixologist, a professional. Needless to say, this will be after concerts, not before. I have to pass my pre-concert breathalyzer test, you see. Oh, sorry. Um, now, speaking of um, alcohol, Make sure to take a look at our Lights Up Showtime landing page at phillypops.org to see our Valentine's Day sweets and drink recipes to bring the fun home. Subscriptions are on sale now. You can renew or purchase a new subscription at phillypops.org um, or by calling 215-893-1955. That's 215-893-1955. 
Danny's looking forward to hearing from you. We can't wait to see you all back at the Pops. Thank you, David. So that's the season, but I have to clarify a few things, David. We saw the beautiful picture of Liz Calloway, so youthful and, and beautiful, and you were in high school with her. You had to be an upperclassman. Maybe you were doing post-grad work in high school. And then to say you were not born in 1979, I know you auditioned. You didn't make it, but you auditioned. But anyway. You can't believe everything a conductor says, Frank. You just... I think you must have had a few drinks before uh, today. Oh. Anyway, thank you, David. Thank you for uh, the uh, synopsis of what's going to be a great season. But we have several more areas to cover today. And I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our chief, chief operating officer, Karen Corbin. She's going to let you know about our acclaimed Salute Series events and educational outreach with Pops and School. Welcome, Karen. Thank you, Frank. Um, I hope that those snippets of music from our wonderful musicians, Ron, Greg, Tim, Michael, and Matt left you thirsty for the shared experience of live music with audience. While we have done all we could during this prolonged interruption to normal, the best part of this day is seeing those musicians again, even if virtually, having some of our staff back in the office for the first time uh, to make this presentation today, and of course, seeing all of you. The Pops has had decades enjoying an incredible connection to the city of Philadelphia. We continue to look for ways that we can bring the Pops outside the concert hall into fresh and unexpected places, providing value to the community that we are so pleased to serve. Even for those who can't come to these wonderful concerts at the hall, we're pleased to announce an extension of our partnership with Welcome America for the Salute Series. We are an official partner of America 250, the federal commission dedicated to the 2026 semi-quincentennial celebration of our nation's birth here in the Cradle of Liberty. And we've recently inked a deal for distribution with the American Forces Network so that all of our troops overseas and the ships at sea of the US Navy and Coast Guard can enjoy every Salute Series concert along with our usual local affinity groups in the region. The Salute Series supports and honors those who commit to a life of service with free concerts on national holidays of American tradition. This year, we are pleased to extend that honor to the frontline healthcare workers who are getting us through this tragic pandemic. With the ongoing support of Carol Eckert, General Carol Eckert, now Senior Vice President of Military Affairs for our presenting sponsor for the Salute Series, Comcast NBC Universal, this is the Salute Series. The fifth year of Memorial Salute at the Man. The continuation of our 40 year history pops on independence on July 3rd. The celebration of freedom ceremony, normally performed on Independence Mall the morning of July 4th, and the pops normally kicking off the July 4th concert that evening. Our support of Veterans Day at several locations in 2019, they were Dilworth Plaza and the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. And of course, Frank's personal heart to Philadelphia, the I'll Be Home for Christmas, salute to the military and first responders. 200,000 people will see a Pops Salute Series in concert this year, more than the total of all of our other activities. Another half a million will now have access to these shows through the American Forces Network. Since I have the opportunity, I wanted to do some particular thank yous of my own. 6ABC was a great support for us this year. It wouldn't have been Christmas for us without Bernie and the 6ABC team so vital in getting our messaging out. Visit Philly has been the most amazing partner that have, to the Pops for many years. Thank you to Jeff Guarasino. And one more call out to the Welcome America team, particularly Michael Delbane, a joy to work with, 
and a tireless advocate for the best possible presentation of our Salute series. I also want to call out the exceptional work that our artistic director for jazz did this year. His Star Spangled Banner for July 3rd, his solo for Amazing Grace, a performance for all seasons and all incredibly memorable. If Frank's connection is deepest to the Salute series, mine is to Pops and Schools. I mention every year that both of my parents are school district graduates. I've worked in a variety of PSD schools and with the school district all on the side, all with enthusiasm throughout my career. The POP supports the school district in every way that we can. We took a quick, abrupt turn to digital delivery of our programs last April and ongoing through this current school year. Classes meet digitally every week for several of our schools. We deliver weekly refreshed materials to a host of other students. We have reached 20,000 students digitally in the classroom concert series access model we had prior to March 10th of last year, we were only reaching 3,000. We'll keep pops in schools at home forever. So if there is a positive coming out of the pandemic, it's that we were forced onto a digital platform which welcomed many, many more students to our music and, and the education activities that go with it. Please check out Pops and Schools at Home for this new way of presenting these supplemental music programs to so many eager students. As a reminder, it's our fifth year at the Isaac Shepherd School at Second in Cambria, general music classes and a choir. Suzuki Violin took the year off due to the pandemic, but we will be back next fall for sure. Our six-year program at the Della Plain McDaniel School in Point Breeze. Thanks to Chase and Susan McDaniel for their ongoing support of the school his grandfather built. We're working on a choir program and a series of performance opportunities at Salute Series events for the Color Guard of the Philadelphia Military Academy located nearby to Temple University. And we're currently working on a schedule of master classes and rehearsals in several PSD high schools for our sixth All City Jazz Festival coming up in International Jazz Month, April. All of those activities are under the direction of our multi-talented artistic director for jazz, Terrell Stafford. We made the best of a truly difficult year and we're so very eager to get back in front of audiences and back into our schools the very moment that we can. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. We hope all of you are as excited about this wonderful lineup for next season and that you're compelled by our ongoing engagement activities. For more details about this new season and how to get your tickets, visit phillypops.org. Now, let's raise a glass to our music director and principal conductor, David Charles Abell, for the excitement and originality of our new season and wish a Valentine's Day heart to the spirit of our great city. We do have time uh, for a few questions and um, Karen will um, ask I, or call on either David or myself to answer any questions you may send in. Frank, our first question is, will the Pops perform again in Delaware? For those that don't know, um, we did record our Christmas program this year at the Grand Opera House in Wilmington. Yes, we expect to perform there again soon. It's a beautiful facility and the acoustics are wonderful and the people of Delaware uh, really appreciate us being there and we are going back. Okay, the next question is, uh, when can I buy tickets to just one single show? So I'll take that one. Um, our usual sales cycle is a subscription cycle through the end of June. Single tickets go on sale for Christmas uh, during our Christmas in July program around the middle of July. And right after that, we begin our single ticket sales in August. Will the Pops continue to have streamed performances and will they be on CBC? Um, the next question is, will the Pops continue 
to stream performances and will they be accessible with 6ABC? So um, again, this is a technical question. Um, we, we had a wonderful experience um, with 6ABC and utilizing their app for help for boost in our streaming. So number one, um, I earlier thanked 6ABC for their help and I look forward to doing more of that with them in the future in terms of our uh, ability to stream, we love it. So we are out raising money so that we can record a version of each of our concert series going forward. That's the plan. I could have answered that technical question. I've only had one martini. <laughs> <laughs> so David, when will we next see you? When will we next see David Charles Abel? I'll be there in March conducting um, Michael Cavanaugh, who is a great favorite of Philly Pops. He, he was on our July 3rd concert this past year, 2020. He's coming back to do a singer-songwriter program with, uh, uh, well, the music of Billy Joel, James Taylor, and Paul Simon. And we've been planning that. We're very much looking forward to it. He's a wonderful entertainer, great voice. He's appeared on Broadway and Moving Out, the Billy Joel musical, and um, very much looking forward to that. The next question is, how can I make a donation to the POPs? So unseen today, but a tireless worker, our director of development, Joshua Thomas, um, can be reached either through info at phillypops.org on the website, or he has uh, put forward his phone number, 215-546-3207. And he's eager to talk to anyone who would like to help us in the path ahead. Um, The final question is, will there be more shows at the Met? Frank? That is The Met uh, is a wonderful place to perform. um, And certain shows perform very well there. So you you can see a rock show there. we will be at the Met. They are a good partner of ours, Live Nation. So, um, and there is one more question that just came up. Um, what is the future for the Pops Ball? So we did have to move the ball. What's the date? So it moved from April. It moved from last September, then to April, since we thought we were going to be able to perform in April. And now it is scheduled at the Bellevue for September 16th, very close to its regularly scheduled time. I don't know, David, if you'd like to talk about the theme for the black and white ball. Well, I love this theme. Yeah, it's the black and white ball. And for those who don't know, that was a famous ball that Truman Capote hosted in New York for all his high society friends in 1966 or maybe 67. And he mixed all sorts of people. He invited his, the, the, the rich and famous and Hollywood stars and creative people, and also the doorman from his building and people he had met in the Midwest. They all came to New York. Everyone was crazy to get a ticket. And they were all told to dress in black and white. So we're gonna continue that tradition. Uh, we're doing three songs from the playlist for that actual ball, plus a lot of Philly Pops favorites. And Liz Calloway, who is an old friend of mine, as I mentioned before, is going to be the soloist for that. So it'll be my first Pops Ball, and I'm really getting into all this swing music and even a little rock and roll for that. So um, hope to see you all there. Okay, fantastic. That's what we have. Frank, would you like to say anything else? Well, again, thank you, uh, everyone who tuned in today. Thank everyone for their support. We look forward to seeing you very soon at our next concert. And as you heard, David will be conducting in March and that will be a stream. So see you soon and in person, certainly a Memorial Day. And then when our series begins in September. Thank you and have a wonderful Valentine's. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.